What's up guys and welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator and holy crap 24,000 likes on the first episode is just absolutely nuts and it's exactly why I'm returning a day later rather than my typical week later. So if that sounds good to you then you know what to do. So it looks like to start off today's episode we've moved on to a new era again. We've already beaten the primitive era and the farming era and the medieval era but this looks a whole lot more like ancient Greece. Right, and we're facing off against hoplite hand holding. It's a bold strategy. Let's see how it holds up against the medieval invaders and their catapult that they've somehow managed to wheel down the narrow city streets. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be amazing. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a small security detail in the back that should be able to catch up to the catapult and protect it if anybody squeaks through our main plan. The biggest responsibility is going to be the bard. <laughs> He's going to be strumming a jaunty tune and walking down the road, luring everybody into a choke point where they can all get blown the hell away. If this works, I'm going to be absolutely amazed. Oh my god, they're all going for him. <laughs> Run away, bard! Run away! We don't want you to get hit with friendly fire any day now, catapult. There we go. That's the good stuff. And now, the security detail is stuck inside the catapult just in time. We're good. Remind me to fire those two. I might have had a little bit of bad intel last time around because they actually sent out Sarissas and shield bearers and now they're sending out full blown phalanx of pop lights. What's wrong with these Greeks? Okay, you'd swear they don't want to be invaded. Maybe they need a little bit more convincing from our king. Right, we can send him on a strictly diplomatic mission, announce his arrival with a minstrel, and he'll bring along his priest to convert them to the correct religion, of course. Maybe an escort of squires, in case things get a little dicey. Come to think of it, I've never used the king before. I have no idea if he's strong or not, so we're just gonna tighten up that security detail because these guys are complete dipshits. They can find a way to get stuck in a catapult, but I swear to God, if they find a way to get stuck inside the king's ass, I'm gonna be pissed. I am really curious if that's healing or empowering the king, because either way, he's got the power of God and anime on his side. Oh, oh, um, you might wanna tell them about Jesus. Forgot to tell him about Jesus, that's not good. Okay, uh, King, I wanna say that the diplomatic mission is going well. You're doing the Lord's work, King, okay? You just keep smiting all the dabbing non-believers. So it turns out they're not a big fan of my religion and they've instead decided to wheel up their ballista to their own holy temples. <laughs> and I'm not really sure how we're gonna go about combating this. Archers won't do anything against those shield bearers. Catapults definitely would. We can just blow them up like bowling pins. But that doesn't leave me with a whole lot of money. I still like the single bard as a distraction followed up by an army. But something like that might work if the catapults actually do their job. Holy crap. That was flawless. You guys have really been training. That was just no contest. These catapults are nuts. Whoa, 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 whoa. We agreed no mythological creatures. I love Jesus at home specifically for this reason. <laughs> you can go throw minotaurs at me all of a sudden. These guys don't fight fair and I have nothing to counter this with. I, I don't even have any money. Like I, I could use knights, but I can only get like what? Three of them? Really? Three knights versus the meaty haunches of a couple of minotaurs. I could even give them their own individual priest. Would that help at all? The default distraction bard who is wearing red. Maybe that'll come in handy. The minotaurs are definitely going for him. Run bard, run or else. He, he's got, oh, he's got the bard. He's got the bard. Somebody help the bard. He's crippling the bard. <laughs> Father, have you tried showing him a Bible yet? <laughs> That would really come in handy right about now. Some of you guys might see that as a catastrophic failure, but now we know that the Minotaurs turn holy men into sloppy Joe meat. So it's a learning experience. And I think I got it figured out. We're gonna use archers, 
right? Because they don't have any shields, and uh, I can buy a whole lot of archers. I don't want them getting charged, though, so maybe we'll spring a little bit to hire some birds. <laughs> okay, you guys are gonna have to take one for the team, but, oh, oh, mm, yep, take one for the team, like I said, uh, keep firing, keep firing, you guys can't possibly miss, okay? It's like hitting the broadside of a bull. <laughs> oh! That was a very upset sound. I'm gonna say it's probably dead. Good, good, that's the sound that we want. Keep firing, keep firing! It's working! It's dead! We did it! Now we're just gonna, what, desecrate the temple? Oh no, we're just gonna kill the last guy. Okay, perfect. I kinda figured once we captured their temples, the Greeks would fall in line, but I honestly did not expect their gods to follow suit, because now we can deploy Zeus, which is pretty dope. Oh, I miss my birds. Um, how about we just make a couple of simple battle formations along the sides? Just stay out of the way of Zeus. Okay, I don't know what he does, but I'm willing to bet it's gonna be aggressive. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, a uh, little friendly fire there, Zeus! I guess you're none too happy that your people lost! <gasps> wow! Dude took an arrow through his arm into his kidney and it just pissed him off even more. Is it safe to say that we should just deploy Zeus every time now? Why would I send out a guy with a pointy stick or an angry cow when I can send out a literal god? Or two, two gods. I'm not even gonna use the other 800. This is gonna be a slaughter. What are they gonna do with their little wooden shields and sharpened? Stone axes, um, oh, uh, that's, that's kind of rude. You can bow now. Feel free to bow at any time as I lightning bolt you square in the tits. What is going on? Is this guy wearing rubber or something? What? Okay. We need to employ some actual battle formations. You know what, that's the problem. We're relying a little bit too much on the supernatural and we need to bring it back to the fundamentals. We stop running around all willy nilly on this frozen lake set up some shield bearers with some Sarissa behind them, and then hopefully this will leave me with enough money to buy a couple of minotaurs. You can have a smidge of supernatural in there, okay? That's perfectly fine. If anything, I think the minotaurs are really good against melee units, so hopefully they could just get in there and brawl, get a hoof full and a horn full and Take down these Jarls. Yeah, there you go. You're not gonna get turned into a hat. That's right. Suck it. Ooh, this looks like it's working. This is actually working. Way to go, beefy. Yes. I would give my left nut for a catapult right now. Just the ability to go nuclear and wipe them all off the face of the earth. It feels so freaking good. I really doubt the ballista can do that, but I can't afford quite a few of them. So maybe we could just set them up in the back, let them do their thing, distract with a bunch of hoplites. I haven't tried hoplites yet. Okay, I don't have a great feeling about this, but we do have shields to block their ice arrows. What? Yeah, they're ice archers. Oh, that's not, that's not good. <laughs> the ballista takes long enough to fire. If it's cold, it's gonna take forever. I'm guessing the ballista is probably good at focusing one big unit. You know, something that you want to hit with a whole lot of damage in one shot, but it doesn't explode. It doesn't take out groups, so it's useless to us. The shields are pretty good though. So maybe we can get another battle formation here in the middle and then back them up with Zeus. Zeus, are you gonna lightning bolt our own guys? I don't remember if you're a friendly fire kind of fellow or not. <laughs> Holy crap, he just demolished all the archers. I didn't even see them fall. They just dropped. It's these guys that are the problem, right? The rubber suit bears just do not want to go down. Keep distracting, keep distracting, okay? Give Zeus some time to work his magic. He's just gonna keep bolting those titties. Come on, Zeus, you gotta be kidding me. There we go, finally. Something tells me they missed the memo about the lake being frozen over. Like, those are boats, right? I'm not losing my mind. Okay, you know what? If it's not broke, 
don't fix it. We're just gonna bring the typical formation, shield bears, sarissas, these guys won't stand a chance. There's no point in bringing ranged because they have a bunch of shields. Okay, I have complete and total faith in my army to do exactly what is necessary. <laughs> like getting crushed by a flying boat. What the hell was that? Are my guys dead under there? I think they're fine, right? They're getting spanked by oars, but they, they seem like they're just kind of tied up in their shields. Guys, they have like, round paddles. You have pointy spears, thank you. Now, as much as I'm enjoying the campaign, I know a lot of you guys in the comments want to see some sandbox gameplay, right? Because we get infinite money, we get to choose both armies, we have access to all of the units in the game, except for the stuff that's coming soon, right? We don't have the ninjas or the renaissance or the pirates are the three things I think that'll be coming eventually, but we do have access to the Vikings and I'm really interested in these long ships because we, oh, oh, uh, uh, men overboard, what the hell happened there? I never even realized until now that the ships are being carried by people. <laughs> I just kind of assumed that they were sailing around on land and then jumped onto the enemy army, I suppose. This guy must have slipped a disc or had a hernia or something because he dumped everybody out. <laughs> now is not the time for you and your armpit hair to panic, Joe. Okay, don't worry about it. I'm gonna pitch you guys a slow ball. I wanna see what these boats can do. I don't have a good feeling about boat number three, but everything else seems to be according to plan. Oh, 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 bad toss, bad toss. Oh, Joe, this is your fault. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say that didn't go according to plan, but at the same time, it is a really cool little unit. Right, it's kind of like the Viking version of Siege. Reminds me a lot of the catapults. You know, it has that same level of impact on a big group. Can't reload it, but at the same time, you get a little bonus army once you're done. So long as they don't crush each other. <laughs> That's it, guys, give them a paddling. This should be easy, right? They have primitive clubs, you have modern age oars. What's going on with that boat? All the others sank, that's the only one to stay around. Okay, that's the one we're getting out of here on so long as we can win. Oh crap, we're gonna lose. We need a hero. Come on, Sven, you can do it. Just, just whack, yes! Sven will go down in history. The halls of Valhalla will sing his name. Speaking of Valhalla, the only unit that we haven't seen yet is the Valkyrie. And they look super intense. Ooh, what should we have them face off against? Maybe some minotaurs? Oh yeah, we could have mythology versus mythology. Uh, I don't think this is gonna be a good matchup for the minotaurs. They're kind of slow and stupid. These things look kind of smart and fast. Except for this one. This one looks kind of angry. Right? Like you got bad news at an eye exam. I think as long as the Valkyries can avoid getting charged, they could just charge the minotaurs themselves. <laughs> How's that for putting the hoof on the other foot? Holy crap. These things are nuts, right? Oh, okay, yeah, they are definitely taking a bit of a beating, but they're so, like, squirmy and weird. The tab's logic for flying just does not work all that well. <laughs> There's nothing but broken wings and swords littering the battlefield, but yeah, they can take it down, no problem. Here's another stupid battle that just crossed my mind. What if we get a whole bunch of Zeus's? What would the plural of Zeus be? Zui? Zui? Yeah, we'll just get a, a whole bunch of Zui and we'll make them face off against a whole bunch of scarecrows. <laughs> nothing but a superpower beatdown happening here. Now, Zeus has done nothing but impress me this game, and the Scarecrows have done nothing but disappoint. So it's gonna be really interesting to see if these stupid birds can actually make a difference. Oh my god, there's so much happening on the screen right now. <laughs> ooh, ooh, those explosions are going down. What? Team Zeus even had the money advantage, right? There was 30,000 worth of scarecrows versus 50,000 worth of Zui. So how did they lose? Oh my God, I completely forgot about the mammoth. Of course we need to get him in here this episode. 
<laughs> so many Snuffleupagai. Can we just get them all over the map? And then they're gonna face off against... I wonder how long ships would be able to handle them. This is gonna lag my game out so much, I'm telling you right now. I'm doing a lot of this in slow motion, not just because it's cinematic, but because if I try to speed it up, the game just drops to like five frames per second. A tale as old as time, the land navy versus the army of angry guy. Um, oh, I thought for a second that they managed to jump over them. That would have been nuts, but no, they're just getting gored. <laughs> Not even close to being close. Look at the pile up. Oh God, this is gonna take the king's men weeks to clean up. I feel bad for the snuffies in the back. You know, the ones that are just kind of stuck smelling farts and waiting for their turn to destroy these stupid little slappy Vikings. <laughs> this is gonna take a long, long time to sort itself out. All right, neither side are really making a whole lot of progress. And if I make it go faster, it is like five frames per second, so I think this battle is won. I gotta keep experimenting with the mammoths, okay? I really can't resist. They're just too good. I hope we get more units like this. And in all reality, I'm only putting down like seven units onto the battlefield. Even if they're big units, it's only seven of them, so maybe that'll help with the lag. Like, that's the thing, people are always leaving comments saying, you know, why don't you do a thousand versus a thousand, or ten thousand versus ten thousand, and it's because the game just can't do that. The game will literally crash every single time, it will not let you simulate that much. It's not like Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator, if you remember that game, because all the animations for the characters were copy-pasted, they're predetermined, whereas with this, it's actually simulating physics. You know, the physics of getting run over by a pissed off pachyderm. <laughs> okay, those spikes didn't really do what I expected. I figured they would hurt instead of anger. Yeah, we got no lag here, just a whole bunch of people that regret their decisions. <laughs> I don't know if they're slipping and falling on the ice, or if they just naturally body slam units, but for some reason they just love to tip over. Excuse me, sir, the, the battle hasn't started yet, could you please stop doing that? <laughs> Somebody's really excited for the battle to start, I guess. I'm really curious what would happen if you have the Mammoth face off against Valkyries. Right, because the Mammoth just destroys everything on the ground, but the Valkyries are kind of squirmy and wily. Would they be able to stay in the air and avoid the tusks? They seem to kind of grind the ground when they charge, so... I don't even know if that really- that does not seem to do a whole lot against them. <laughs> I'm gonna run my face right into its face. Difference is, it's the size of a tractor trailer, and I'm the size of a squirrel. Well, they are definitely fighting, and we're just seeing some dead mammoths. I may have chosen a few too many Valkyries. Yeah, that, that's my bad. I didn't think about the fact that they'll fly and just kind of hang around on their back where it's safe, stab the mammoths until they stop moving. So we've used the regular archers, and we've used the snake archers, neither of which were all that impressive. I'm curious about the ice archer. We based off against them. They just kind of freeze units solid, as far as I can tell. Wonder how they would do against a bunch of head butters. <laughs> Have we seen the head butters? I feel like they just get tossed in. I don't even give them a second thought. Ooh, okay, ice arrows away and frozen, kind of. There is a definite size discrepancy in some of these units. And I've been noticing that over time, that like, some of them are just bigger or smaller than others, even though they're the exact same. <laughs> this is not going well for you guys, is it? I don't know if they're gonna be able to close the distance to get those headbutts off. Maybe? Oh, oh, some of them will. Yeah, I mean, in reality, an ice arrow is a pretty sweet thing. The whole idea behind range is you don't want them to close that range. You want to keep them at a distance. And if they're moving slowly, then that seems really advantageous, as long as you don't shoot your friends in the back with your ice arrows. <laughs> it's just a little icy pile of head butters. That's interesting. I, I never thought about that facet. The snakes don't do that, right? They just kind of piss people off. I was gonna end things, but I really can't resist seeing what an army of minotaurs would do. <laughs> we've only ever seen like two or three at a time, but what if I have a dozen? 
and some of them dance. How did that happen? <laughs> it's the size discrepancy thing. Like, he's too swole. I mean, he's been doing too many exercises and now his upper body is huge and he can't fit in the ranks. What a beefcake. You know what? I'm gonna have you guys completely destroy an army of halflings. <laughs> They're about the size of your biceps, so this should be a fair fight. Who's gonna be the first to make a move? Is it gonna be the furry-footed leap, or will it be the beefy charge? It's the furry-footed leap. They probably didn't want to make the first move, come to think of it. <laughs> Jumping right into that chest hair. Oh, God, no. Those are some bone-curdling crunches. <laughs> I don't know why I did this. I mean, this was clearly not gonna be fair. It's a massacre. <laughs> All the poor little bodies. <laughs> They're just getting like dragged away and stuff like that. The camera is shaking so much and it's not even lag. It's every time one of the bulls lands a hit, it just kind of shakes the earth. It's ground shattering. Oh no. Roto. But you know what, I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. And I have been seeing your comments, okay? I do plan on doing another arena challenge at some point, another tournament at some point, but right now I'm just enjoying the campaign, you know, screwing around. We finished the introductory campaign today, we still have the adventure campaign and the tactical campaign. So if you guys wanna see that, as always, be sure to leave a like on this video, let me know, and I'll return for more soon. But thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.